The Chicago Bulls have got to be one of the most famous teams in the NBA, and their dynasty is one of the best ever because they won six championships in the 90s. The Bulls have had players who were MVPs, Defensive Players of the Year, and All-Stars, so it's clear that they know how to find good players. On that note, let's look at the greatest Chicago Bulls players of all time. First up, Michael Jordan. Okay, you probably saw this one coming. This best player of all time also happens to be the best Bull. When people talk about how great he was on the court, they also talk about his time with the Bulls. 11, 10, Jordan, Jordan a drive, hang, fire, yes! Yeah! Jordan holds 27 records with the Bulls, including both the team's offensive and defensive records. He was the scoring champion 10 times, and he was also on the all-defensive first team 9 times. Apart from this, he also won the Defensive Player of the Year award in 1998. Jordan is the team leader in points, rebounds, assists, and steals. He has scored 29,277 points in his career, which is more than 14,000 more than Pippen, who's in second place. He's also the player with the most games and minutes played, even though he left the team for about a season and a half. In the end, his legacy is best known by his six championships, his 6-0 record in the finals, and his six finals MVP awards. Not gonna lie, ever since Jordan left, the Bulls haven't been as good as they used to be. Coming up, Scottie Pippen. Pippen has won six championships with the Chicago Bulls. He was an all-defensive player who could also score 20 points a night. Pippen spins in for the right for the this all-NBA player may have lived in the shadow of his team's star player, aka Jordan, but was a legend on his own too. He is not only one of the best perimeter defenders of all time, but also one of the most versatile. He's second in the team's history for the number of games, minutes, field goals, two-point field goals, assists, steals, and points. The second most offensive, defensive, total win shares, and value over a replacement player are also on that list. Honestly, Pippen should be seen as the second best player though, when he's literally helped win six titles for the Bulls. Not to mention, Derek Rose. Rose has done more in a short time in the league than most players do in their whole careers. Oh, another turnover. Oh, this is trouble. He was the league's youngest MVP, and a rule was made in his honor so that players who do well early on can get bigger contracts. After tearing his ACL, which ended the Bulls' playoff run in 2012, Rose missed the whole 2012-2013 season to work on his knee and his game to get back to full strength. This is still up in the air, but since he was picked first overall in the draft, Rose has given Bulls fans hope that they will soon win a championship. There's no doubt about how important he was, both on and off the court. Hopefully, Rose is on his way to becoming a future Hall of Famer and maybe the first player since Jordan and Pippen to have his number retired. Let's look at Bob Love. After being traded to the Bulls during the 1968-1969 season, Bob Love was doing amazing. Takes down the offensive rebound, out to Van Leer, in and out. Bob Love gets it another pass, Bob Love. He scored all the points the Bulls needed to win and was one of the first power forwards to score. It looked like he had the size of a four, but the speed and quickness of a two. In 1971 and 1972, he was named to the all-defensive second team. He was also an all-star three times with the Chicago Cubs. In 1974 and 1975, Love led the Bulls to the Western Conference Finals, where they were swept by Milwaukee Bucks and then lost in Game 7 to the Golden State Warriors. Even then, though, Love is still one of the best Bulls ever. He's third all-time in points, second all-time in free throws, made and eighth all-time in rebounds. Up next, Jerry Sloan. You know what? Sloan may have been the best Bulls player to have never won Defensive Player of the Year. What we know is that he was on the All-Defensive Team six times over the course of ten years, and he was on the first team four times. He used to play the most games, play the most minutes, and grab the most rebounds. Sloan scored 10,233 points in his career, which put him in the 10K club. He also averaged 2.2 steals per game, which is second on the team's all-time list. On top of this, he has the best defensive rating for his team, and his 36.6 defensive win shares are the third best of all time. Fun fact, Sloan went on to coach the Utah Jazz, who played his old team, the Chicago Bulls, in the 1997 and 1998 NBA Finals. Moving on to Norman Van Leer. In seven years, Van Leer was on the all-defensive team six times. On top of that, he was the team's starting point guard and was in charge of the offense. Also, keep in mind that he was the all-time leader in assists for about 20 years when he left the Bulls. During the same time, Van Leer was also the team's leader in steals. His his average of 6.9 assists per game is close to Ennis Watley's average of 7.0 per game, which is the team record for average over a career. Van Leer was also tough. He played 35.7 minutes per game on average and got into the top 10 in defensive win shares. At the time, he and Jerry Sloan were part of one of the best defensive backcourts in the league with Jerry Sloan. He leads the break. Chicago running with Van Leer cracking the whip down the middle. 
Feeds off to Sloan from 20 feet. Following up, Artis Gilmore. Gilmore is in the top 10 of 17 different NBA categories. When the two leagues merged into one, the former ABA star did very well in the NBA. He was also on four all-star teams and one all-defensive team. And get this, he's the only player in Bulls history to have blocked more than 1,000 shots. His 1,029 blocks are still the most by anyone on the team. He's in the top 10 for minutes, field goals, two-point field goals, offensive rebounds, total rebounds, and points, with a field goal percentage of 58.7%. This player holds the team record for both field goals and two-point field goals. His 63.1% true shooting percentage and 2.1 blocks per game are both team records, not to mention Dennis Rodman. Rodman has had a pretty good run, even though he only played for one team for three years. He helped the Bulls win three straight championships while he was on the team, though. Rodman wide open. Tried to bank it in, <laughs> the rebound, and hammers it home. Also, for three years in a row, he was the league leader in rebounds. Turns out he was so good at getting offensive rebounds that his 1,097 offensive boards ranked 10th all-time. The Bulls ended up setting a team record with Rodman's 15.3 rebounds per game. Even Pau Gasol gets 11.4 rebounds per game, which comes second on the list. Rodman also holds team records for the number of offensive rebounds, the number of defensive rebounds, and the number of total rebounds. Cassell feeding Robert Ory and blocked by Dennis Rodman. One of the best rebounders in the game was a big part of the team's three-peat from 1996 to 1998. Next, Joachim Noah. The team recently paid tribute to the emotional heart and soul of the Bulls. Noah's work on the team over nine years was so good that it earned him a place in the ring of honor. The reason why they value this player a lot is because he helped the Bulls stay in the game when Derrick Rose was hurt and they were having a hard time. Noah was one of the top three centers in the league in 2013 and 2014. He got the Defensive Player of the Year award and made the All-NBA First Team because of this. Noah is fourth on the team's all-time list of rebounds. Rebounds, but he has more offensive rebounds than anyone else. He's also third in blocks and is one of only three players who have gotten at least 800 blocks over the course of their careers. Hey, yeah, Adamon, that's his fifth foul. Came and blocked. Noah comes right back with a rejection. Finally, Zach Levine. Levine got the Bulls' biggest contract ever this offseason. What's for sure is that if Levine keeps going at this rate, he'll be number one in a lot of different categories. Levine's average of 24.8 points per game is currently the second best in the NBA. Also, right now, he's third in franchise history with 731 three-point field goals. At this point, he'll probably make more than Kirk Henrich's 1,049 three-point field goals someday. Levine still needs to do a lot of improving, though. He has only made it to the playoffs once with the team, and he has never played in the second round. And to Zeller, and Zeller tried oh. to throw it out of bounds. Corky James spots Zach Levine and put that one into the dunk contest. The for a player who makes $215 million a year, there will be a lot of pressure on him to lead the team. Despite this, he lived in Chicago and seems ready to make his mark on the team's history. That's a wrap for this video. Are there any more on your list of the greatest Chicago Bulls players of all time? Which ones are your favorite from this list? Let us know in the comments below. Also, be sure to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel for more videos like this. See you in the next one.